What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton and today we are on part 10 of my series on SQL and data analytics for beginners. So guys, what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about two things, forecasts and trend lines. But what do they have in common? Well, our main objective in this episode is to learn ways in which we can build valuable insights off of the data that we currently hold or present in our charts. And so we can gain future insights from it to see where we might be going off of our current sales numbers, etc. So as you guys know, we've created a story here that has two charts or two sheets in the sense of Tableau. We have a sales over time chart and also a profit ratio over time chart. You know what? I want to go ahead and add a third one. So let's start off by doing that. We'll go ahead and create our third sheet here. Now, what kind of chart do we want to make? Well, we've done our sales our profit ratio, you know, it'd be nice to know how much in total, um, how much quantity we're selling over time, which is another valuable insight. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do our two values. We need a dimension of order date. And we're going to go ahead and change that before we add our measure to monthly. All right, perfect. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and add our quantity. So we'll just double click that. And perfect, it prints right in. Now, we don't actually have any forecast right now, so let's go ahead and add one. To find forecast, you're going to go to the Analysis tab on the toolbar at the top. Go to Forecast and click Show Forecast. And there we go. We've at least got a good initial start to our forecast. Now, a lot of you might look at this and be kind of curious about you know what this entails, what it means. So. Basically speaking, the solid line within the forecast area is the best prediction, in general speak. It's pretty much what Tableau can give us the best measure of what it should be based off of previous data. And then on the outside of it, these uh, bands that have the lighter shade around it, this represents the predictive interval. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. The one thing I really want to iterate here, though, is there's a little bit of a difference between a forecast and a prediction. And this is something that's vital to understand if you want to get into data analytics. So what is the difference? Well, forecasting is usually traditionally used in economics and weather because it's solely based off of measuring information from the past so we can forecast what will probably happen in the future due to the information we already have. Whereas a prediction is as simple as this. Let's say, for example, we're talking about stock prices and it's $100 for one share of Apple. I'm a financial analyst and I come out and I say, mm, yeah, I'm guessing it's going to be $120. I like the company. It's technology. Did I really use any information or data to get that? I might have, but it's not solely based off that. A lot of that is just a simple prediction from my personal views and emotions. This is not biased in any sense. This forecast comes from specific mathematical functions that get to these values and these predictive intervals. So now that we've covered that, so you guys get a little bit of an understanding of that, we'll go ahead and go look at the forecast tab. We're going to go to forecast options. And this is good to get used to the interface because the traditional forecast that it might produce for you might not be enough for what you want to show. So the first thing I want to cover is the forecast length. Now let's say for example that, you know, I don't want to just see the next 13 months, which is the automatic feature. I want to see multiple years, weeks, you know, whatever it may be. And let's go to exactly. Okay. So exactly is going to be what we want to put. And then we could do say two to three years. Now I really want to emphasize something here. You don't want to have a forecast that goes out for too long and I'll show you why. I'll go ahead and do 30. Notice how not only does that look unprofessional, but you see how the bands are getting wider and wider. And there's a reason for that. Because over time, the forecast's level of predictability in the sense of intervals and where the price level could go becomes very, very kind of uh, non-specific. Uh, it's, you know, over time, things are set to change. And over time, that uh, predictability of whether or not the sales or the units sold in this are going to continue is really hard to measure. So we're just going to go ahead and do three years. And it, you can see it's much more leveled. Uh, and there is still a little bit of a growth in the intervals, but that's normal with time. So the other thing I want to cover here, too, is how you can change the predictive intervals. If you want to get more specific, let's say, and, you know, 
take out the risk of saying, okay, no, I, I, I don't want to have 95%. I think we can be pretty specific and do 50%. With 50% confidence, we can see this much price level. So um, basically what that's saying is that there is a 50% chance or at least prediction interval based on that the price is going to range somewhere within these level. There's almost a level of 50% confidence. Now, if we do 95%, that confidence is increased. However, the range of price is also increased. So we're taking less risk, you know. So as we cut it down, the confidence level is also going down, but the price range is shrinking. So we can also go up here to source data and we could ignore uh, certain time periods. Now, the reason for this is because, let's say, for example, uh, you're taking current sales data and you're in the middle of the last month and you want to start recording your data and getting a forecast. However, this month hasn't been complete, the one that you're currently in. So you might want to ignore that month or ignore the last week, you know, et cetera. And you can change that right in here. So we're just going to leave it as is, though. Looks pretty good as it is right now. And there's also different forecast models you can use. So for example, if we go to uh, custom, it's gonna mess it up for a second because we haven't set any trend on it. So let's go ahead and do an additive trend. And then we'll also do additive as well. So basically what additive does, it's basically um, the growth factor keeps increasing on a pretty steady basis. Whereas if we use multiplicative, we gotta use it on both, multiplicative, uh, almost does an exponential growth with it. And we can see that once we start doing five years, 10 years, as you can see, it starts to really grow above. And it really depends on what kind of forecast model you wanna build. If you think that you're more of a fast growing uh, company or organization, then you might wanna use the multiplicative one. And But in most cases, you probably wanna use the additive one just to stay safe. So we're gonna put that back onto additive. And we'll do it for three years. Perfect, that looks pretty good. So okay, we'll just click okay on that. Now we wanna add a trend line. How are we gonna do that? Well, much like with a forecast, it's pretty simple. We'll go ahead and click analysis, trend lines, and show trend lines. Now by default, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us uh, a trend line for the units sold, uh, the current trend for the units sold. And it's also gonna give us one for the forecast. And I mean, we could leave it this way, but to me, it just doesn't look very professional. So we're going to go ahead and edit the trend line. And then there's a few different types you can select. In my opinion, in this case scenario where we have uh, our trend kind of going up at a curve, let's use an exponential. As you can see, it looks a lot nicer than what we originally had. And it kind of puts together the forecast and the units sold numbers that we already have. However, I want to make it one solid line rather than having these two overlap against one another. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the forecast indicator getting its own and make one that merges with both. And this looks great. We're really starting to have a decent looking chart here that is giving us a perspective into the future based off previous numbers, not a prediction, but a forecast. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then what I'm going to do is go to my dashboard and I'm going to drag in sheet three. drag sheet three in awesome and uh, now that kind of shrunk everything else so what I'm gonna do is uh, lay it down a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size or the uh, height of our dashboard all right that looks a lot better so we'll go ahead and shrink this a little more make it even and there we go we've got a nice little chart showing that we're expecting a growth in our units sold over time so it's a good sense of getting a forecast uh, in the sense of the numbers and data that we have. And now we've added yet another sheet uh, that really gives us some insight into the future onto our chart. So this is perfect, guys. We've really made a lot of progress in this episode, and it's good to know how to utilize these tools. And if you guys want to beef up your skills on it, there's some ways you can use it uh, more towards what you're looking for. And there's a lot of resources online that can really help you get used to using a forecast and trend line. So anyways, guys, that's it for the video. I appreciate you all watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay tuned.